Completing the Saju Valley Community Center without crafting is a challenge that has been done. But this was done over three in-game years, and it turns out that this challenge can be completed in year one. In fact, it can be completed on the first of winter, year one. Why? The tree syrups. Maple syrup, oak resin, and pine tar are usually obtained via a tapper, but the only way of obtaining one is by crafting, which I definitionally cannot do in this run. Pine tar is only needed for the exotic frogging bundle, but it's not compulsory and therefore can be skipped. Oak resin can be obtained from horses' skulls in the quarry mine. Finally, maple syrup can be obtained from a wood chipper, which is available from Winter 1 and beyond, and it is this that sets the end date for the run. This run will be done with standard bundles, and it will be done unseeded and without the map predictor, but there are still tricks with the game's RNG that can be done. Overall, I don't think that this challenge will be that hard. Will it be a breeze all the way through, or will I be scrambling all the way to the end to submit every item? It's time to find out. Day 1 of Spring I start by clearing space to plant 15 parsnips. Immediately, you can tell that I'm doing this on the Riverlands farm. This farm is chosen as it comes with a free fish smoker, which is beneficial as I plan on getting most of the needed money from fishing. And I'll be getting a lot of free coal from the mines as well, as without crafting, I have much less need for smelted bars. Next, I go to the Cindersap Forest to look for spring onions. I low roll and only get four, but I use these to chop trees in the forest, bus stop and farm until I run out of energy. The wood will be useful later, but I can't do anything with the sap or the fiber, so I just sell those for a bit of extra money. Then I go to bed, getting level 1 foraging overnight. Day 2 of Spring I water the parsnips, then go to the beach. I get the bamboo rod from Willy, then fish until his shop closes, but with 5 inventory slots, my inventory constantly fills up and I constantly have to sell my fish to empty it. Without the ability to craft chests, I have half the inventory I usually do. Right before Willy Shop closes, I have enough money and fishing speed to buy the fiberglass rod, as well as 30 bait. With my new rod, I fish all night at the lake, returning to the farm right before midnight to ship my fish. Then I go to bed, getting level 1, 2 and 3 fishing overnight. Day 3 of Spring I once again start by fishing at the beach. Previously, I would have gone out of my way to use this guaranteed rain day to fish an eel, but as I am forcing a rain day in fall for the walleye anyway, I can catch the eel then as well and focus more on money today. When Willy Shop opens, I spend all of my gold on bait and return to the farm to fish. At the farm, I set up my fish smoker at the edge of the water and start fishing. Catfish can be caught here and I double their value by smoking them. Right after 2pm, I get two fire quartz from a treasure chest. I ship one and store one on the table that comes for free with the house. I'm not limited to the 12 slots on the hotbar, I can store items on tables, but only one item per table and only single items, not stacks. I can't even store tools on tables. I go to bed right before 2am and get level 4 and 5 fishing overnight. I get the Fisher Profession for better fish sale prices as well as 5600G from shipping what I've caught today. Day 4 of Spring I fish until Pierre's shop opens. Right before 9 I go to his shop. I buy the backpack upgrade for inventory space as well as 2 cauliflower seeds, 2 potato seeds, 2 green bean starters and 9 kale seeds the kale being for farming XP. I return to the farm, fish until 3pm, then decide to end the day fishing at the lake, bringing my fish smoker with me so that I can smoke the largemouth bass I get. As I fish, I get a diamond, but nothing else of note is obtained. Then, after shipping today's catch, I get level 6 fishing and level 2 foraging, the latter from a skill book I fished up. Day 5 of Spring Marnie visits me this morning, and she gives me a cat that I name Bees. Then, once I have Bees, 
I harvest my parsnips and plant the seeds I have. I can't craft scarecrows, so I'm limited to 15 seeds. I fish until 8am where the community center cutscene is available. I go to Pelican Town and skip the cutscene instantly. Watching it completely puts me at the community center, saving 10 in-game minutes, but the cutscene takes so long. I read the scroll, then decide to fish at the lake today instead of going to the mines. Right before 2pm, I fish up a Neptune's Glaive, which will help a lot in the mines. I take a break from fishing to return to the farm, ship my fish, and chop some trees. I've sold enough to be able to buy the first house upgrade, but I still need 450 wood. At 7pm, I return to the lake to fish some more, but don't catch anything notable, and go to bed right before 1am, getting level 1 farming and level 7 fishing overnight. Day 6 of Spring Today is my first day in the mines, but before that, I have a wizard to see. I pick up a daffodil from the bus stop, a wild horseradish near Marnie's ranch, and visit the wizard. I skip the cutscene instantly, as I don't actually want to meet the wizard, pick up a dandelion near the secret woods, then head to the carpenter shop to buy the house upgrade, chopping trees on the way. At the carpenter shop, I buy a telephone, so I can ring Gus every morning at 6am to see what the dish of the day is. Then, I buy the house upgrade, not to cook things or marry anyone, but because the fridge that comes with it is storage space. I meet Demetrius, then go into the mines. My goal in the first half of spring is to reach floor 80 so that I can farm void spirits, as these enemies have a small chance of dropping copper, iron and gold bars, letting me complete the boiler room. For today, I reach floor 30 right before midnight and go to bed shortly after, getting level 1 combat and level 1 mining overnight. Day 7 of Spring First thing that happens, I get the furnace recipe from Clint, but skip the cutscene so I don't meet him. I water the crops, submit my gems to the museum, open my geodes, give Demetrius a liked gift, and return to the mines. Here, I go from floor 30 to floor 40, but don't go further, as my luck today isn't good, and the stones on the ice floors are three times tougher. I buy two spicy eels from the saloon, and then go to bed, getting level 2 mining overnight. Day 8 of Spring The second rain day of Spring. I throw all my items onto the floor, pick up my fish smoker, and go to the river south of Jody's house to fish for catfish. Throwing items on the floor is a way that I could store items, but since items disappear if the game is quit, I'm reluctant to store items this way between days. I fish for catfish, smoking them in my fish smoker whenever the previous fish are done. Right after 8pm, I get a diamond, a foraging skill book, and another Neptune's Glaive from a treasure chest. I only need one sword, but I take the other two items. Right before 11pm, I return to the farm to ship today's catch. To ensure I have the inventory space to put everything in my inventory before the end of the night, I complete the spring foraging bundle and submit a parsnip and a winter root as well. At 1am, I go to bed and get level 8 fishing and level 3 foraging overnight, as well as 16,000 G from fish, gems, and river goo. Day 9 of Spring The house upgrade is done, which means I finally have storage. I move my new bed to the front of the house, store my items in the fridge, and chop a few trees while waiting for the carpenter's shop to open. Once the shop opens, I buy a coop and place it next to the house for easy access, using my money to buy the rest of the wood I needed. I also give Demetrius a liked gift. Then, I open my geos and submit my gems, minerals and artifacts. I have 15 items there when I'm done, and go to Willy to buy bait for a rain day tomorrow. Oh, he's not there. Is that the doctor? Heck. Well, I get some food from the house and go to the mines. But even with a good luck day and a luck buff from eating a spicy eel, I only make it 10 floors to floor 50. Once I've gone to bed, I get level 2 combat overnight. Day 10 of Spring Today is another rain day, so the best thing for me to do is fish at the river for catfish. I fish catfish all day, taking a small break to buy baits from Willy. I even get a single Iridium catfish. I don't level up a skill tonight, 
but I do get 15,000 G overnight from shipping today's catch. Day 11 of spring. I start by harvesting the kale and potatoes, but the green beans and cauliflower aren't done yet. Then, fishing. But, I visit the saloon once it opens. Today's dish of the day is a maki roll, which is needed for the chef's bundle. If I can get a fried egg the same way, I can complete this run without cooking as well as crafting. I return home to go to bed at 1am. I ship some of my fish, but keep the smoked catfish, iridium shad, and iridium smallmouth bass. These are worth a total of 18,000 G, but if I keep them until I have level 10 fishing, they'll sell for 22,000 G, an increase of 4,000 G. I also get level 9 fishing. Day 12 of spring. Today, the coop is ready, which means that I now want to build a barn. I water the cauliflower and green beans, then chop trees on the way to Money's Ranch. I buy a brown chicken named Omelette, and a white chicken named Fried Egg, as well as 50 hay, then chop trees in the forest until around midday. To reach 350 wood, I buy some more wood, then build the barn to the left of the coop for easy access. Then, back to the mines. I get a solar essence from a ghost and a frozen tear from a dust sprite and make it to floor 60 bang on midnight before going to bed getting level 3 mining overnight. Day 13 of spring. Today is the egg festival. I water the crops and pet the chickens then chop trees throughout the farm and the forest. Despite opening at 9am, access to the egg festival is open until 2pm giving me 5 hours to chop more trees. I enter the festival and buy 11 strawberry seeds. This keeps my total seeds planted at 15 as I can't craft a scarecrow and don't have a rare crow yet. These strawberries are grown to get loved gifts for Demetrius, who I talk to at the festival, then leave. I plant my tree seeds, then go to bed, getting a little full foraging overnight. Day 14 of Spring I water the crops, pet the chickens, and get some food from the bat cave. I got very lucky, and a bat has placed a pomegranate here, saving me 6,000 G later on. I ate my second spicy eel, and descend from floor 61 to 72 before the spicy eel runs out, and make it to floor 75 at 8.30pm. Deciding not to risk passing out before making it to floor 80, I stoned farm for the last few hours of the night, then go to bed getting level 3 combat overnight. Day 15 of Spring after petting my animals, washing my crops, opening my geodes, and submitting my gems and minerals to the museum, I spend the rest of the day fishing for fishing XP. Day 16 of Spring I pet my animals, water my crops, and give Demetrius a topaz before buying the coop upgrade as Robin walks out of a door. Then I go to the mines. I descend to floor 80 by 1pm and spend the rest of the night farming the void spirits on floor 81. I do this because Void Spirits are the best way of getting the Copper Bar, Iron Bar, and Gold Bar to complete the Blacksmith's Bundle, with odds of 4% per Copper Bar, 2% per Iron Bar, and 1% per Gold Bar. I do this while smoking my Largemouth Bass from yesterday. By the end of the day, I have a single Copper Bar, and then go to bed, getting Level 2 Farming from Eggs, Level 4 Mining, and Level 4 Combat, as well as nearly 6000G from Diamonds, and Void Essence acquired today. Day 17 of Spring I start by retrieving 17 items for bundles from my fridge to reduce the number of items there. I pet the animals, then submit these items, completing the Spring Crops Bundle, the Geologist's Bundle, and the Adventurer's Bundle. I fish at the river until I get a catfish, stick it in the smoker, buy a cow from Marty named Mui, then spend the rest of the night fishing while smoking catfish. I also get two dinosaur eggs today. After going to bed, I get level 10 fishing, picking the angler profession for better fish sell prices. Day 18 of Spring Today, I start by gathering fish and smoked fish to sell and items to donate to the museum. I water the crops and pet the animals. I get 43,000 G by selling fish and smoked fish and submit some more items to the museum. With my money, I buy every vault bundle apart from the 10k one, buy 450 wood, 
and buy the barn upgrade. Then I farm the void spirits, getting one iron bar, three copper bars, and four diamonds from diamond nodes. Overnight, I get level 5 mining and choose the geologist profession. Day 19 of spring. I have one goal today. Get a gold bar from the void spirits. I do my morning routine of petting the animals and watering the crops and then farm the void spirits in the mines until right before 6pm where I get the gold bar. I leave the mines, retrieve 100g from the quest menu, complete the blacksmith's bundle and complete the 10k bundle, completing the boiler room and vault respectively. Most importantly, completing the blacksmith's bundle gets me a furnace, the only furnace I can get in the run. Demetrius is snatching all alone because I've been working his wife to the bone. I give him a gold purple mushroom to cheer him up. To end the night, I chop some trees and use my single furnace to smelt my copper and iron ore. Overnight, I get level 5 combat, getting the fighter profession for extra damage. Day 20 of spring. I do the morning chores and chop trees while waiting for Marnie's shop to open. I buy a duck, name her Quackums, then a elevator in the mines. Not for money, but for museum donations. I'm close to getting that rare crow. A note on elevatoring. 1.6 has changed the geo tiles such that every day they move up by one tile. I can no longer rely on a single overpowered geo tile throughout the whole run. I can either seed for one over a time period of 2 to 3 days, or take the good tiles as they come and go. At 3 pm, after selling my no longer wanted boots and weapons to the guild, I go to Clint. I open my geodes, submit my pickaxe to be upgraded, and submit the geode minerals to the museum. I now have 46 items in the museum, which gets me the yellow rare crow. I have 14 items left to get to open the sewer, and 5 artifacts left to get the raccoon rare crow. I buy one spicy eel from the saloon and 44 kale seeds from Pierre. I plant these and my mixed seeds at the farm, protected by the rare crow. Everything will be ready on the 26th, letting me have a higher farming level by the time I harvest the second round of strawberries. Hopefully, I will be able to give Demetrius a quality strawberry on his birthday. Day 21 of Spring After the morning chores, which are now longer due to having 70 or so plants to water every day, I sell some fish to Willy and my miscellaneous items to Pierre, getting enough money to buy a goat, which I must get today as Marty's ranch is not open the next three days. I buy the goat, name her Goaty McGee, give Demetrius a strawberry, blow up some iron nodes, and spend all night fishing at the lake while smelting my iron one bite at a time and smoking my fish one fish at a time. Overnight, I get level 3 farming and level 6 mining. Day 22 of Spring After the morning chores, I get my pickaxe from Clint and geode farm in the mines. This time, the best geode tile is on floor 75 because the geode tiles now change every day. By the time Clint's shop is about to close, I have 50 omni geodes and 4 diamonds. I open the geodes and sell a few of my diamonds and then submit the geode minerals obtained to the museum. I'm now at about 5 items left to open the sewer and I also have a prismatic shard. Partway through opening the geodes, I upgrade my pickaxe to iron. I know it will take two days instead of one because of the upcoming festival, but the iron pickaxe is needed as soon as possible. I go to the desert, get a coconut and cactus fruit for the community center, and turn my prismatic shard into a galaxy sword. Then I give Demetrius a strawberry and spend the day farming dust sprites to progress the monster eradication goal while smelting the copper ore I currently have. Day 23 of Spring After doing the morning chores, I buy two copper ore from Clint, go to Robin's shop, and smelt my last of five copper bars in her shop. It's a fire hazard, but I'm in a hurry. The last copper bar is done right on time, and I buy a silo to make feeding the animals easier, and to get hay from grass. After nearly setting Robin's house on fire, I chop a few trees, fix a beach bridge, get a sea urchin, buy three spicy eels and nine salads, and spend the rest of the night farming dust sprites. However, 
I want to buy the Rare Crow at the festival tomorrow, which costs 2,500 G. I have no way of getting money tomorrow. It turns out that the items I've shipped today, plus 250 G from uh, sliming a gold slime, is barely enough to meet this goal with only 24 G to spare. Day 24 of Spring Today is a flower dance. The only person I'm getting friendship with at this point in the run is Demetrius, who can't be danced with. Even if he could be danced with, he only has 2 out of 4 hearts needed. After doing the morning chores and chopping a few trees, I go to the flower dance anyway. 11 hours of the day I missed, from 11am to 10pm, just so that I can get a second rare crow. I buy the rare crow, talk to Demetrius, and then talk to Louis to begin the dance and end the festival. After the festival, at 10pm, I'm not done yet. I submit a cactus fruit, coconut, crystal fruit, wild plum, blackberry, spice berry, both large eggs, and the sea urchin to the community center. Now I'm done. Day 25 of spring. Today, the second round of strawberries are ready, but harvesting them now would be a big mistake. I water the kale and the potatoes, taking care not to harvest any strawberries at all, pet the animals, get my iron pickaxe from Clint, sell some gems, and go to Willy. On the beach, I find an oyster, which is the last item I need to complete the crab pot bundle. I buy a lot of baits from Willy, but he's also selling catfish specific baits, which will help me fish up catfish tomorrow. I sell my fish, buy a pail, milk my cow, and then go back to the mines. I eat a spicy eel, and then descend down floors 80 to 98. But, by calling Gus at 6am this morning, I know he's selling a Tom Car soup today. I leave the mines to buy the Tom Car soup, destroying my progress on floors 96 to 98. Worse, I accidentally meet Shane on my way into the saloon. This won't affect the quests as badly as it would in 1.5, but it will reduce the odds of me getting an item from Demetrius. I give him a piece of coal as punishment. Overnight, I get level 6 combat. Day 26 of Spring I pet my animals, then fish at the river for catfish, smoking them as I go. At the end of the day, I ship today's catch, getting me 18,000 G overnight. Day 27 of Spring I pet my animals, eat a Tom Car soup and harvest the kale and potatoes before harvesting the strawberries. Leveling up from the kale gets me to farming level 4 and the Tom Car soup pushes me to farming level 6 temporarily. The result? 1 gold strawberry and 4 silver strawberries. Demetrius is going to get a 3 week old strawberry on his birthday and he's gonna love it. Then I submit both mushroom types to the community center as well as a duck egg, crab, oyster, bream, and both mushrooms again to the field research bundle and dye bundle. This completes the crab pot bundle, but I don't care about the crab pots. I go to Pierre, buy the final backpack upgrade for 10,000 G, and get an autumn's bounty gust throughout. Maybe he's sick of me calling every day at 6am. Then I smelt copper until I have 5 bars, farm and smelt iron until I have 5 bars of that, and go to Clint. I open my geodes, getting me a single museum submission, and that, plus the chewing stick from yesterday's fishing day, gets me to 57 out of 60 items to open the sewer. I also get my axe upgraded to copper. The rest of the night is spent dust sprite farming, getting me halfway to the burglar's ring before going to bed, getting level 4 and 5 farming overnight, as well as level 5 foraging. I get tiller for better sell prices of crops and forester for extra wood from trees. Day 28 of spring. I pet the animals and then it's time for the mines. I go from floor 95 to floor 110 with the help of a spice eel before entering Pierre's shop. I buy an apple sapling this will get me 3 apples for the folder bundle at the start of fall, provided that nothing prevents the apple tree from growing at any point. Then I buy 3 lucky lunches. I'll be using this much later on. 
I plant the apple tree below the coop, then return to the mines. I eat a second spicy eel and go straight to floor 120 and get the skull key. While this makes the monsters tougher, I don't know when the best day to enter Skull Cavern will be, so I just got the last five floors out of the way today. I submit a large milk and cave carrot to the community center, completing the exotic foraging bundle, and that's the end of spring. Day one of summer. Summer is here, and with it, there are a lot of new crops that need to be grown. I pet the animals, clear some space, and get my axe from Clint, then go to Pierre. I buy 11 melon seeds, 10 corn seeds, 3 sunflower seeds, 3 poppy seeds, 3 blueberry seeds, 3 hot pepper seeds, 3 tomato seeds, and a ton of wheat seeds. The extra melon and corn seeds are bought to get the quality crops for the quality crops bundle, and the other seeds are bought in lots of 3 instead of 1 for redundancy in the event of lightning strikes. I chop the trees blocking the right side of the upper crop area, then submit my axe to be upgraded to iron, before getting the 9 melon seeds from the museum, as well as the other seeds stored there. Returning to the farm, I plant the melons, corn and other seeds, untilling two spaces where sprinklers will go in the future. The melons and corn are planted with quality fertilizer, and the rest of the seeds except the wheat and hot peppers are planted with speed grow. I retrieve the flower dance rare crow from the farmhouse and place it on the island directly south of the farmhouse and then plant more wheat there. All this wheat doesn't actually have to be watered by me. There are two guaranteed rain days on the 13th and 26th and the green rain event added in 1.6 is another guaranteed rain day. Once everything is planted and watered, I spend the rest of the night farming dust sprites before going to bed getting level 7 mining overnight. Day 2 of Summer Today is going to be a busier day than yesterday. I grab my fishing rod and hoe from the fridge. Then I water the crops, pet the animals, clear the bat cave, get a grape near the quarry bridge, and then fish at the lake. I catch a bullhead and a sturgeon, go to Clint, open my geodes, submit two geode minerals to the museum, then go to the beach. I till up a dried starfish, and then fish up a tilapia, tuna, and a puffer fish, plus a sunfish from the river. The dried starfish and another artifact from a treasure chest get submitted to the museum, which is enough to unlock the sewers for tomorrow. I go to the mountain lake again, fish up a chub, then go to the community center, getting a sweet pea on the way. These nine items, plus a pomegranate and peach from the bat cave, get submitted to seven different bundles. I was supposed to catch a largemouth bass with a chub, so I go back to the lake, catch one, and submit it to the lake fish bundle, completing it. The rest of the night is spent farming dust sprites. Day 3 of Summer I start by retrieving my silver strawberry, rubies, farm warp totem, hardwood, stone, wood, and watering can from the fridge. Only the coolest water for my plants. I get the rusty key from Gunther, water the crops, pet the animals, and then enter the coop. The dinosaur egg has hatched, and I name the dinosaur Regium. Then, while waiting for Clint's shop to open, I go to Demetrius and give him a strawberry. I also tell him about the dinosaur egg that hatched, and he gives me a triple shot espresso. He can do that? Then, I get my iron axe from Clint, get a secret book, and go to the secret woods. I get a fiddlehead fern, fish up a wood skip, and warp back to the farm. I go to the desert, fish up a sandfish, chop a tree, and buy 15 spicy eels at the desert trader. The hardwood, stone, wood, sandfish, wood skip, and fiddlehead fern get submitted to the community center, completing the specialty fish bundle and getting me 5 dish the seas. The rest of the night is spent farming dust sprites, and then after a night of dusting off dust sprites, I go to bed, getting level 7 combat overnight. Day 4 of Summer I water the crops, pet the animals, give Demetrius a silver strawberry, and spend the rest of the day farming dust sprites. Until 7pm, where I complete the Monster Slayer goal. I go to the Adventurers Guild, get the Burglar's Ring, then spend the last few hours farming blue slimes for jades. 
Day 5 of Summer After watering the crops and petting the animals, I enter the coop and pick up a duck feather. Then enter the bat cave and find an apricot and an orange. Since today is Friday, Krobus is selling a single iridium sprinkler, so I buy one. While expensive, this is the easiest way to get sprinklers in this run and thus is definitely worth it. I place the sprinkler in the melon patch, go to the desert and go to Skull Cavern. For today, I'm not trying to get a red cabbage seed or rabbit's foot, I just want some omni geodes to buy desert warp totems to more easily force those items later. I do this by entering and leaving floor 1 of Skull Caverns as I only care about the monsters and not descending levels. After a day farming carbon ghosts, I have enough materials to buy 7 desert warp totems, but I also have 8 bombs and 2 jades for future runs in Skull Caverns. The last thing I do is submit the orange and apricot to the artisan bundle and the duck feather to the dye bundle. Day 6 of Summer I water the crops and pet the animals and harvest the now ready hot peppers, then go straight to Skull Cavern. Here, I am farming serpents and purple slimes for a red cabbage seed or a rabbit's foot. Whichever one I don't get today, I will get another day. This is once again done by resetting floor 1 as I don't care about going deep today. I get a rabbit's foot at 1pm then get another one at 3.40pm. I keep going in case I get a red cabbage seed, but don't get one today. I do have 21 bombs, plus, once I leave Soul Caverns, 6 bombs from the Desert Trader. Then, once I go to bed, I get level 8 combat overnight. Day 7 of Summer Today, Stardew Valley experiences green rain for the first time. This causes a few effects. Shops are closed, villager schedules are unique, moss is abundant on trees, and trees grow very quickly. But for me, the most important effect of the green rain is... It's wet. The one rain only fish in summer can be caught, and the wheat will be watered. I harvest a poppy, pet the animals, and milk my goat, getting me a large goat's milk which is enough to complete the animal bundle. I also get another pomegranate from the bat cave, which is useful for the artisan bundle. Then I go to the beach, fish a red snapper, and submit these items plus a hot pepper and rabbit's foot from yesterday, getting me a cheese press and 5 beach warp totems from completing the animal bundle and ocean fishing bundle respectively. For the rest of the day, I chop trees to get 550 wood to buy the final barn upgrade later and farm stone in the mines and on the farm to reach 600 stone. 300 stone is also needed to build the final barn upgrade and the rest may come in handy later. Finally, due to the stones on the farm, I get mining level 8 overnight. Day 8 of Summer While I need to harvest the sunflowers and water the crops today, that doesn't matter for the start of today. I also no longer need to pet my animals as I have everything I need from them that requires high friendship. All I need today is a single red cabbage seed, so I warp straight to the desert and farm serpents and purple slimes while resetting floor 1 over and over. This day gets tried 5 times and even on the 5th try I don't get a red cabbage seed at all. The thing that has me decide to keep the day? 6 jades. I got an above average amount of jades, which means more ladders for much later on. The day will come when I need a rain totem from Skull Caverns, and extra ladders will make that easier. Before I go to bed, I water the crops, harvest the sunflowers, and chip my void essence and emeralds. Day 9 of Summer I do 3 more attempts to get a red cabbage seed, then I decide to do a few other things today instead. I water the crops, get a silver strawberry to give to Demetrius, and get a cow cheese and goat cheese from the fridge. These items were obtained by putting spare milks in the cheese press from the animal bundle. I submit both cheeses to the artisan bundle, completing it, and get a keg. I submit a palm fossil to the museum, and retrieve the decorative items. 
Then I give Demetrius a silver strawberry, buy the final barn upgrade and place the decorations in the house. I place the keg and put a strawberry in it to get a wine for the enchanters bundle. At 11am I go to Skull Cavern as I have nothing better to do in the day. At 2pm I get a combat quarterly book from a serpent. While not a red cabbage seed, this is an excellent find. If I take this to the bookseller, I can get a monster musk from him which will make getting a red cabbage seed twice as likely by doubling the spawns of serpents. I rush to the bookseller, buy a monster musk and rush back to Skull Cavern. I don't use the monster musk though, choosing to save it for a fresh attempt. And I'm at the bus stop now. One diamond. One curiosity lure. 35 void essence. Oh, and also, one red cabbage seed. Yeah, I forgot to press record and got the seed while not recording. Since this red cabbage seed was obtained without recording it, I'm not comfortable using it as my one red cabbage seed, so here's the plan. I will store this seed on the table in the house and will attempt to get a red cabbage seed tomorrow using my monster musk to get double monsters. This seed will be planted next to it and will serve as a backup in the event of a lightning strike but will not be THE red cabbage seed. I spend the rest of the day farming for serpents in Skull Cavern, then return to the farm and ship my sellables at 1am and then go to bed. I get level 9 combat overnight. Day 10 of summer. By the end of today, I really do want to get a red cabbage seed. Tomorrow is a luau, which gets me friendship with Demetrius. Friday is when Krobus sells a sprinkler. Both are events I cannot miss. On the first attempt, I don't get any red cabbage seeds. On the second attempt though, the purple haze appears at 1.20am and I get a red cabbage seed from one of the serpents. 40 in-game minutes until pass out. I leave and rush back home. I pick up the other one from the table. It is 10 in-game minutes until pass out. Not enough time to plant them today. That doesn't matter, I can plant them tomorrow. Day 11 of summer. Today is a low hour, but there's some things I have to do before I go. I get a sunflower from the fridge, then I check the mail. Demetrius has given me a Nautilus shell. This saves me from needing to max out his friendship and from messing around with fish ponds. My plan B as a secondary way of getting the Nautilus shell. The tomatoes are ready and I water the crops after harvesting them. The melons and corn will take a bit longer as quality is more important than speed. I destroy two hot pepper plants and plant the two red cabbage seeds there. I milk the goats and get a gold goat's milk. I also pick up some deluxe speed grow from the oasis then return to the farm and put this fertilizer on the cabbages. These cabbages will be ready on the 17th. I submit a tomato, nautilus shell and sunflower to the community centre then go to the luau. I have the gift from Demetrius already but I have nothing better to do today. A gold quality goat's milk goes into the soup. I hope the governor is prepared for an unforgettable luncheon. The last thing I do is plant some more wheat to the right of my main crop area. Day 12 of summer. I harvest the now grown blueberries, water the crops and buy another sprinkler from Krobus. Then I go to Marnie and buy a pig naming him Poinko. Unlike most of the other animal products, the truffle doesn't require high friendship so Poinko does not need to be pet. The Iridium Sprinkler is placed on the left of the farming patch and now I no longer need to water these plants every morning. I go to the desert, get a plus one defense book from an artifact spot and go into Skull Cavern. I have the red cabbage seeds and the rabbit's foot and I'm not getting the rain totem today. All I want is stuff to sell. I have two more sprinklers that I want to buy. I want to buy 100 or so pumpkin seeds on fall one and I want to buy 200 deluxe speed grow for those pumpkins and winter seeds and finally I want to buy at least 50 wood chippers to make it as likely as possible to get a maple syrup from them. All up this comes to a total of around 100k I need to get. I leave Skull Caverns right before 5pm 
buy a few things from the desert trader and return to the farm. I water the wheat on the right to advance their growth by one rain day and chop the rest of the stumps and logs on the farm for hardwood to feed the wood chippers. Overnight, I get level 6 foraging. Day 13 of summer. Today, the melons are ready. I grab a tomka soup to boost my farming level and harvest them, getting all 5 gold melons I need for the quality crops bundle, plus 1 for the summer crops bundle. I submit these two items to the community center and then wait 2 hours for Pierre's shop to open. The rest of my melons get sold and I buy 20 more melon seeds to occupy the space and get a bit more money. The quality sprinkler gets placed to the top right of the farming area and the melon seeds are planted where the previous melons were grown. Then I return to Skull Cavern. I get some more cloth from mummies, then leave, chopping the palm trees for wood. I buy a mill from Robin to turn my wheat into flour so that it sells for more. I also buy a single mini fridge for some extra storage. I also got a red cabbage seed from those mummies which gets planted next to the previous two. Then I put a battery into the secret box in the tunnel and then go to bed at 4pm getting level 6 farming overnight. Day 14 of summer. I pick up a rainbow shell from the beach and place it in the box at the train station. Then I go to Skull Caverns to reach floor 25 and get the 10,000 G reward from the Keys Challenge quest. Easy! I get the Monster Slayer goal for Serpents on the very first Serpent of the day on floor 2 and make it past floor 25 by 1pm reaching floor 65 by 10pm. I leave, visit the Desert Trader, ship everything I got today and then go to bed getting level 9 mining overnight. Day 15 of Summer Due to making it past floor 25 in Skull Cavern yesterday, Mr. Key has sent me 10k in the mail. Also, the corn is ready and once I've harvested all 10 corn, I have all 5 gold corn that I need. Instead of immediately taking the corn to the community center, I go back to Skull Cavern. At 4pm on floor 55, I get a lucky ring from a crate, which is a free plus 1 to luck in a few important situations coming up. I reach floor 65 by 7pm, but leave as I'm running out of food. On the way out, I decide to convert my iridium ore into mega bombs, as I feel that this is better value than smelting it with my one furnace. I visit the saloon, buy 50 salads, and then go to bed, getting level 10 combat overnight, getting the brute profession for extra damage. Day 16 of summer. Today, the wheat has done growing and the first wine is done too. I harvest the wheat and set aside 10 wheat and hay for the folder bundle. The rest of my wheat goes into the mill and the rest of my hay goes into the silo. Then I go to the community center. I submit 5 gold corn to the quality crops bundle, a corn to the full crops bundle, the wine to the enchanters bundle and the wheat and hay to the fodder bundle. 10 radish seeds are bought to ensure the sprinklers are fully utilized. I submit the final dwarf scroll to the museum and get the translation guide. The main thing I could buy from the dwarf is rare crows, but I don't need any yet. Then I go to bed at noon and get level 7 farming overnight. Day 17 of summer. The red cabbages have finished growing, so I take one to the community center, complete the dye bundle, and bring the seed maker into the mines. Ice slimes can drop winter roots, which when put into the seed maker, produce winter seeds. When the pantry is complete, these can be grown in the greenhouse, letting me complete the crafts room nearly two weeks early. I spend the rest of the day farming ice slimes, ending the day with 25 winter seeds. I also get a few jades in the process. Day 18 of summer. I spend all day ice slime farming getting another 25 winter seeds. Day 19 of summer. Today is Demetrius's birthday. He's given me the gift I needed, so I'll give him a gift he'll love. I start by getting a gold strawberry out of the fridge, buy another sprinkler from Krobus, and then give Demetrius his birthday present, a 20 day old strawberry. He goes from 3 hearts to 7 instantly. I spend the rest of the day ice slime farming, 
ending the day with 68 winter seats. On the 20th and 21st of summer, it's a two-day event called the Trout Derby. The idea is simple. Fish rainbow trout, get golden tags, and trade in those tags for random prizes. I get 11 prizes over both days, the most important being a tent kit and a single quality sprinkler. A little mid, but this festival is more worth it with rainbow trout specific bait or challenge bait. Day 22 of summer. Today, I get the rest of the flour from the mill and a truffle from the pig. I farm for winter roots until I have enough of them, then I ship my sellable items, getting me 12,000 G from the flour alone. Day 23 of summer. Today, the mystery boxes are now available. These are geode-like items that drop items like seeds, rings, hardwood, and most importantly, cooked dishes like the elusive fried egg. The odds of a fried egg in particular is about 0.1%, and unlike with geode drops and artifact trove drops, this cannot be manipulated by opening the more easily found geodes. I get a jade from Evelyn's trash can, and then plant about 400 wheat. Today is raining, tomorrow will rain, it will rain on the 26th, and it will rain on whatever day in fall I force the rain, which means that this wheat is guaranteed to grow to completion without requiring the use of my watering can. I also buy two rare crows from the dwarf to help with this. Day 24 of summer. I go to Soul Caverns for money and mystery boxes. I get 5 mystery boxes and 10k for miscellaneous mob loot. Also, I get level 10 mining and get the gemologist profession. Day 25 of summer. From the last few days in Soul Caverns, I now have 3 prismatic shards, so I buy a magic rock candy for the day that I go to Skull Caverns for a rain totem. I also buy 225 Deluxe Speed Grow from the Oasis for the pumpkins in fall and the winter seeds in the greenhouse. In addition, 15 beet seeds are bought to complete the mysterious key quest. Then I go into Skull Caverns. At noon, I leave and visit the bookseller. I forgot to check his inventory and was curious what he sold. Good thing I did check as he had a combat quarterly book which I bought and immediately sold back to him for a monster musk. 5000 G for a monster musk is a bargain. From the melons, monster drops and miscellaneous items I ship today, I make nearly 30k gold. Day 26 of summer. I buy the last sprinkler from Krobus and then go into Skull Caverns. I spend half the day farming for mystery boxes, but only get one. Underwhelmed, I go to Clint and open them. Nothing notable. Day 27 of summer. I check Blade's code diving video to look at sources of mystery boxes and find that mystery box drops are dependent on the luck stat and not the source of the monster. As such, today I farm dust sprites for mystery boxes with the plus 3 luck boost from a lucky lunch. I get 10 mystery boxes and 13 winter roots which I turn into even more winter seeds. Day 28 of summer. I submit my truffle from a few days ago to the community center, then open my geodes and mystery boxes. I get a sprinkler. That's neat. So far, I've gotten 20 mystery boxes, and I don't think I could farm enough of them for this to be a viable method of getting the fried egg, so I prepare my inventory for tomorrow's planting day. Day 1 of Fall Summer is over, and fall is here. I harvest the wheat on the sprinkler tiles, destroy the existing quality fertilizer, and put deluxe speed grow on all of the sprinkler tiles. I plant the 15 beet seeds, then go to Pierre. I buy 3 eggplant seeds, 3 yam seeds, and 82 pumpkin seeds. These, plus the 9 pumpkin seeds from the museum, get planted. With that done, all I have left is to fish a tiger trout and find a common mushroom and hazelnut. 
With one hour of fishing, I fish up a tiger trout. But, after looking around the entire map, I don't find a common mushroom or a hazelnut. So I submit the tiger trout to the community center and go to bed. Overnight, I get level 8 farming. Day 2 of Fall I look around the whole map again, but don't find what I need. To encourage spawning of forageables, I chop all the trees in the backwoods, mountain area, bus stop, and some more trees in the forest. Day 3 of Fall I harvest the three apples for the fodder bundle, then pick up a common mushroom from the backwoods. Unfortunately, there isn't a hazelnut anywhere on the map yet. I chop the stumps in the secret woods, then continue clearing out Cinderstab forests of trees. Overnight, I get level 7 foraging. Day 4 of Fall Once again, there isn't a hazelnut anywhere on the map. I get a wild plum from the mountain, and two common mushrooms from the forest, so that the game is likelier to spawn hazelnuts in these areas tomorrow. Then, I finish clearing all the trees, stones, and weeds from the forest. Day 5 of Fall Once again, there isn't a hazelnut on the map. But, the beets are ready, so I can complete the mysterious key quest today. I harvest the beets, buy a solar essence from Krobus, put the beets in the mayor's fridge, and give the solar essence to the dead dragon at the desert. I return to the farmhouse and get the club card, but I'm not going to enter the casino until after I've finished the community center. Then, I chop the stumps in the secret woods, and clear out the railroad. Day 6 of Fall A hazelnut has finally spawned, and at the bus stop as well. I go to the community center, complete the Fall Forging Bundle, and complete the Fodder Bundle. Then, I set up my inventory for a Skull Caverns run on the 8th. Day 7 of Fall Before going to the desert, I visit the bookseller. I buy a Combat Quarterly, and sell it back to him for a second Monster Musk. Both Monster Musks I have will be used on the day I farm Haunted Skulls for an Oak Resin, as a single Monster Musk only lasts for a bit more than half a day. Then, I go to the Desert Trader. I buy 71 staircases with all of the jades I've saved up over the whole run, as well as a few more coffees. Then, I sleep at the entrance to Skull Cavern using my one tent kit, saving me about 20 in-game minutes of time tomorrow. Day 8 of Fall Today is the day that I'm going into Skull Cavern for the last time. The item I need is a Rain Totem, and I have a 1 in 26 chance of getting one from every treasure chest I find. Based on me getting an average of about 10 treasure floors each attempt, my odds of getting a rain totem each attempt is about 1 in 3. The rain totem is needed to catch the walleye, a fall only, rain only fish needed for the night fishing bundle. I left the eel and catfish for fall, but those two fish could be caught in spring as well. Since rain is not guaranteed in fall, it is a good idea to get a rain totem to force the weather to be raining for these fish. As an estimate, there is about a 2% chance of there being no natural rain days in fall. It takes 4 tries. On the 4th try, I get my first rain totem right before 10am on floor 81. That's right, first. I decide to continue to see how much money I get and get two more treasure floors with rain totems in them, for a total of seven rain totems. I use one so that tomorrow it will rain. And from all the sellable items I've shipped after returning to the farm, I make 57,000 G. Day 9 of Fall Today is the first rain day of Fall, but I also got very lucky today. The dish of the day is a fried egg. I don't have to force this dish of the day through step manipulation. I fish up some catfish, chop stumps in the secret woods while waiting for the walleye to appear, fish up a walleye, buy two fried eggs from the saloon, and fish up an eel. Then, these items get donated to the community center, completing the river fishing bundle and the night fishing bundle, as well as the whole fish tank. Day 10 of Fall 
two day, the eggplants, massive amounts of wheat, yams and pumpkins have finished growing. I eat a tomka soup for plus two farming, harvest the wheat, reach a temporary level 11 farming and harvest the pumpkins and other crops. I get 23 gold pumpkins which is much more than I need. The five gold pumpkins, regular pumpkin, yam and eggplants get submitted to the community center completing the quality crops bundle, the full crops bundle and with that the whole pantry. Then I put my wheat into the mill and set up my inventory to plant the winter seeds tomorrow. Overnight I get level 9 farming as well as 36,000 G from shipping the rest of my pumpkins. Day 11 of fall. I get 500 flour from the mill then go into the greenhouse. I till, water, fertilize, place sprinklers then sow seeds. When I'm done, 111 winter seeds are planted here and I'm basically guaranteed a snow yam and crocus on the 16th. But for today, I'm not done yet. I've planted two big fields of wheat, but with my rain totems, I can do a third. I buy 800 wheat seeds and plant 650 of them at the farm. The rest of them don't get planted as I run out of tiles that are protected by rare crows. On fall 12th, 13th and 14th, the only thing I do is use a rain totem to force rain on the next day and chop the stumps in the secret woods. Day 15 of fall. The wheat is done today so I don't use a rain totem. Instead I harvest the wheat, chop the stumps in the secret woods and then stick the wheat into the mill. Overnight I get level 10 farming and level 8 foraging. Day 16 of fall. Today is the Stardew Valley Fair, but more importantly for me, the winter forage in the greenhouse has finished growing. I get the flour from the mill, harvest the winter forage, and then ship the flour and surplus forage. Then I assemble 9 items in my inventory for the Stardew Valley Fair. I go to the fair, set up the grange and easily win with 99 points out of the required 90. I gamble my points up to 6000 then buy every item at the shop for the giggles. Once I'm back at the farm, I take the crocus and snow yam to the community center, completing the winter foraging bundle as well as the whole crafts room. From flour, forage and miscellaneous items, I make 80,000 G overnight. 58,000 G of this is from the flour alone. Day 17 of fall. Now that I have access to the quarry mine, today is all about getting an oak resin from a Horton skull. However, with the new side passage in the quarry mine, less haunted skulls appear in the main passage, and I can't access the side passage with my current pick. Fortunately, haunted skulls spawn in dungeon floors in the regular mines, and all I have to do to unlock them is enter the quarry mine. I don't even need the gold scythe. For today, floor 51 is a dungeon floor, so I reset this floor over and over. Three times. It takes less than two in-game hours on my first attempt, and I get the oak resin. I submit this to the community center, completing the enchanter's bundle, and now the only item left to get is a maple syrup. This item can only be obtained craftless by sticking a hardwood into a wood chipper, only available from winter 1 and beyond. What will I do for the next 11 days?
Day 1 of winter. I wait until 9am in front of Robin's shop and then I go in and buy 264 wood chippers. I walk to the desert having cleared it all yesterday and place all of my wood chippers there. Then I place all of my accumulated hardwood in those wood chippers. It takes 3 hours and they start producing wood. Immediately I get a pine tar, shortly after an oak resin and in a few more moments the maple syrup I needed. If brute force doesn't work, you're not using enough of it. I take the maple syrup to the community centre, complete the chef's bundle, the bulletin board and with that the entire community centre is done. I go home and return the next day. Officially, the run is over on the 1st, as that is when the final item is submitted and the cutscene is always one day after unless interfered with by a festival or rain. On the 2nd, I get the letter informing me about the wood chippers. I thought that this letter was what unlocked them, but it turns out it's actually just unlocked on Winter 1. Good thing I checked the wiki. This run had its moments, like trying to get the red cabbage seed and trying to get the rain totem, but overall this wasn't that hard. Another thing to consider is the casino. I didn't need anything from there during the run, but now I want to visit the statistics terminal. Zero items crafted, zero items cooked, in one convenient information screen. So that's it, thanks for watching. If you want to know what the next video will be, subscribe to find out.